number 17 then from the 2017 Advanced Higher Maths. 8 marks here for complex numbers. You're given a polynomial equation of degree 4 this time. So it's going to be 4 complex roots. In fact, it gives you one root to begin with, and for the first mark, you have to state a second root. Well, I've called that Z1 just to keep track of them. So if it just says state, that means you could just say, well, if that's a root, then its complex conjugate must also be a root. Maybe I'll write is also a root. But it did just say state, so that should do. Here's the first mark. Now B for six marks. Find the value of Q and the remaining roots. Well, there's umpteen ways of finding Q. Well, it's not actually umpteen, but there's quite a few ways of finding Q. You could, for instance, take this root, and since it's a root, if you feed it through it, the answer should come to zero. But that means you'd have to put it in, multiply it by itself to get z squared, multiply again to get z cubed, multiply again to get z to the four, feed it all through, eventually there'll be a number plus q, so q will be the negative of that number. And after all of that, it wouldn't have helped you at all to factorize the rest of it to get the other roots. Equivalent to that, because you may think, oh, I could do that the way that you do synthetic division in the higher. You could use synthetic division. That's very true. Just because you've got a complex number doesn't stop it being a number that just feeds through. I'll start it off, but I'm not going to go very far with it. 1, negative 6, 16, negative 22, Q. Yes, you can feed 2 plus I through it. And, yes, knowing that that's a root of that equation, this answer here should come to zero. So whatever expression you end up with at the end, which will involve Q, should come to zero. But of course, what happens when you start feeding it through? You drop down the one, you multiply it up, two plus I, seems simple enough, add it, that's easy. Negative four plus I, now you've got to start multiplying it up. A complex number times a complex number, add it. A complex number times a complex number, add it. Now look at the nature of these parts as well. That's because synthetic division is actually an evaluation table. You use that table to evaluate an expression that's a nested form of the same calculation you did in the first place just by trying to put 2 plus i through it. Not only that, look what you end up with. These will be the coefficients of the resulting cubic quotient. And they'll be full of complex numbers, so the whole thing's really no use to you. That leaves only two sensible roots, which would be reconstruct the quadratic that produced them and either divide it into this to find the other quadratic or simply say multiply by and find the quadratic you need to multiply it to produce this. You'd probably go for divide it in, but either way I'll need to reconstruct the original quadratic. So what could they have come from? The factors that would have produced them would have been z minus 2 plus i, and z minus 2 minus i. That would have been a quadratic factor. Maybe I could state that is a quadratic factor. Now, you get marked for putting down these two linear factors. Now, multiplying that out, there is a long way and there's a short way, and I suppose there's also an intermediate way. The long way, which is pretty pointless, is to take it as three terms times three terms and go through all that palaver, I would say. The short way is to realise that in forming that product, you're going to have z squared, the first times the first. The z terms are made up of these two parts, minus this and minus that. In other words, minus this plus that. And adding them's easy because complex conjugates means those parts disappear, so you've just got four. Then the last part would be last times last. Well, you've got a product, and of course it's going to be plus. You've got a product of the difference of two squares here. But since it's i, which multiplies to give negative one, you've actually got the sum of two squares. So it'll be two squared plus one squared. Four plus one, five. There's a mark for that. used to do that in the higher. 
seems to have disappeared. If you've got two roots, alpha and beta, I'm just going to stick with the x's here, then the original one would have been x squared minus the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots. You used to know that. Of course, same roots, that means they came from a quadratic equation. Anyway, so there's two ways then, I said. The way you'll probably do it is just divide it in. So I'll do that first. z squared minus 4z plus 5, you know, is a factor. So if you divide it into this, you know it should go in exactly. Now you just got to go through all this algebraic division. Now, setting up the division, let's put it here, is one mark. Now you've got to carry it out. z to the power 4, well that just means I need another, just multiply by z squared and I'll have z to the power 4. Minus 4z cubed plus 5z squared. Subtract it to see what's left over. 16 take away 5, that's an 11z squared. 6 take away negative, that's negative 6 plus 4. So that's a negative 2z cubed. Bring down the next term. Negative 2z cubed. Well, that means I need a negative 2z to multiply this. Then that'll be plus 8z squared minus 10z, subtracting that. Negative 22, but take away will be plus 10 is negative 12z. Eight, 11 take away the 8 is 3z squared. Bring down the q. Well, with a 3z squared, it'd have to be a plus 3. So multiplying this out, 3z squared minus 12z, all fine. That's a 15. That should come to 0. Well, just now that comes to q minus 15. But since it's a factor, you can see q minus 15 is 0, so q is 15. Now, going through the algebraic division was a mark, and finding the value of q is a mark. Although q is a bit of a waste of time, because you don't actually need to know that in order to find the remaining quadratic factor, because there it's there. The other way, instead of doing this, would be to say this. You know that z squared minus 4z plus 5 is a factor, and since it's power 4, there must be another quadratic factor. Although this is easier when you know the number at the end, then it's a very quick method, much quicker than the algebraic division. Because all I know about this factor is if it starts z to the 4 and that starts z squared, that must be z squared. But I don't know the other two. If you did know the number at the end, then from that 5 you would immediately know this number. There would only be one thing to find, and this is by far a quicker way than doing algebraic division. Here it's a bit even Stevens here. So I don't know these terms. I'm going to call them P and Q, but there's a Q there. I'll just call them A and B. Plus AX. Ooh! AZ plus B. And the technique here is, if that's equivalent to that, I'll just put the equal zero in. If this is equivalent to that, then you can compare terms. So we'll take the z cubed terms. So what makes z cubed here? It'll be z squared times this. So I've got a of them. I've got this z times the z squared, so that's minus 4. And many of I got here is minus 6, which means that that a is going to be a, take the 4 across, negative 2. And we'll jump to another one. Jump to the other end, jump to z. What makes a z term here? Well, I've got the minus 4 times the b, so that's minus 4b. And I've got the 5 times the a. But I know what a is. a is negative 2. So I can pop that in. And what is the z term here? Negative 22. So that's negative 10. Take it across. Makes that negative 12. So you've got b is 3. So now you know the factor. z squared minus 4z plus 5 times z squared minus 2z plus 3 actually takes less in the way of writing than going through the algebraic division. And it's certainly a lot faster if you're starting with a polynomial where you know the constant at the end, because then there's only one part to find. It only takes a single step to get it, instead of going through all of this. And if you wanted Q, which of course is of no interest to you because you only want to finish off with this part here. If you want the value of Q, you know that 3 times 5 makes Q. So Q is 15. Anyway, there's only one mark left now, and that's for finding the other two roots, which will be this thing. The other two roots will be the solution of z squared minus 2z plus 3 equals 0, the one you got here. 
or better from doing that other method, but you'd probably stick with that. Now, that doesn't factorise. It's got a negative discriminant, 4 minus 12. So that means you'll have to go in with a formula. So the negative of b is 2 plus or minus all over 2 times the first one. The square root of, just said what the discriminant was there, and I've forgotten already, 4 take away 12 is negative 8. That root of negative 8, you can take the 4 out of that. So that would be 2 times, and you're still left with the square root of negative 2i. So that's a root 2 times an i. So that means you've got, I'll just put it down again, 2 plus or minus 2 root 2i over 2. So that means the two parts are, I'll call it the 3 now, z3, everything divides by 2. So it's 1 plus root 2i, and z4 is going to be 1 minus root 2i. There's the last blank. And part C for the final mark, show these four solutions on an Argand diagram. Well, in the Argand diagram, the real part is put along this axis, the imaginary part's put along this axis, sometimes you add an E and an M, oh, I'll just put it in, but I don't normally bother. The imaginary part, however, it is just a coordinate diagram for showing Z equals X plus I, Y, or Y, I if you're in the north of England. And it's these real numbers that you plot here, so the, the actual scales in this are just like the scales on any coordinate diagram. Those are actual numbers. 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. That represents 2i. You could put a dot there and call it 2i, because that's the position of the point 2i. But you shouldn't call the scale pot the scale mark 2i, though. Then you just plot them. Z1, 2 plus 1 up. Just put it in there if you like. That's 2 plus i. 2 along, 1 down. That's 2 minus i. 1 plus root 2. Well, root 2 is higher than 1 because it's 1.4. 1 plus root 2. So it's just below 1.5. 1 plus root 2i. Since I've got those names, I could just have called them Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, and symmetrically placed. And they're quite fussy in the marking scheme. They want to make sure you've got these in a line, with them higher and so on. And that'll be 1 minus root 2i. Now notice, those are the numbers. If I wanted just the coordinates, I'd just be putting the real parts. So instead of 2 plus i, which is the number, you could just say that's the point 2, 1. Instead of 2 minus i, you could say that's the point 2, negative 1, and so on. Whichever way you did it, that's the last mark.